The next joint that I want to talk about is the metatarsal joint of the foot. The metatarsal joint is composed of the talonavicular joint and the calcaneal cuboid joint. The, are, these are two functional joints, or two anatomic joints that comprise one functional joint. The talonavicular joint is responsible for movement that occurs in the medial column of the foot. When I talk about the medial column of the foot, I'm talking about the first ray, um, and then what we sometimes refer to as the central column of the foot, which is the second and third rays. These together dictate the joints that are going to be moving um, along with the longitudinal midtarsal joint. And then we have the calcaneal cuboid joint, which is dictating what's going on in the lateral column. So if we stop and we look at where the axis is for the longitudinal midtarsal joint, that axis exists nine degrees from the sagittal plane. So if I were to divide the foot into a left and a right side, I'm going to have my axis deviated nine degrees towards the midline of the body. Then it's going to be deviated 15 degrees from the transverse plane. So if I were to divide the foot into a dorsal and a plantar aspect, I'm going to be 15 degrees from the transverse plane. Remember that all these pronatory supinatory axes run mad. That means that the axis will be running medial, dorsal, anterior, and distal. So medial, anterior, or dorsal, and distal. They're running mad. This axis, because it is only nine degrees from the sagittal plane, will have a large amount of frontal plane motion. This axis is only deviated 15 degrees <clears throat> from the transverse plane. So it will have very minimal transverse plane motion. So the predominant plane of motion for the longitudinal metatarsal joint will be the frontal plane. So if I were to try and manipulate this and try to demonstrate the motion of the longitudinal metatarsal joint, I could reach around, and now I'm gonna turn the foot, but I could reach around the foot. I'm grasping and stabilizing the calcaneus and then I'm gonna reach around and grab the navicular. And then as I glide the navicular in relationship to its articulation with the head of the talus, you can appreciate that that movement is predominantly frontal plane. You can imagine it going in this type of direction, which is frontal plane motion. So now if I can take this and just correlate it with an absolutely real foot, I'm going to do the same type of maneuver. What I'm going to do is Put the subtalar joint in its neutral position right there. I'm going to grasp the calcaneus. Now I'm going to reach around to the navicular and I'm going to put that through a range of motion. I'm going to try to move the foot up so maybe you can see that a little bit better. I'm grasping, I'm maintaining the foot, subtalar joint in neutral. And that is frontal plane motion. And you can see that it's predominantly occurring in this type of motion. If I were to again show what's going on with the axis itself, um, here, you can see it's running um, medial, anterior, and distal, and it's running roughly aligned with the second ray of the foot, nine degrees from the sagittal plane, and 15 degrees from the transverse plane. That's the longitudinal mid-tarsal joint.